the inability of the right to be able to deal with the notion of privilege or inequality in our society, whether it is racial inequality, whether it is income and wealth inequality, you cannot really accept the fact that this exists in any meaningful way and maintain your conservative worldview. Or to the extent that you do say it exists, it has to be perpetrated by those people who are losing out when it comes to inequality, right? So if there is some type of inequality that is... Uh, racial inequality in the way that uh, black people are treated in, in the country. It is, but it's really what it is, is it's a historical problem. They are un uh, unappreciative of any of the things that have improved for them. So really it's about them being uh, unappreciative. And then also, you know, thrown in the, uh, the implications of this cigarette tax, but it's really the cigarette uh, smokers who are being oppressed. That's where the real inequality is. And the same goes with inequality in terms of wealth and income in this country. So here is U.S. Representative-elect Glenn Grothman, Republican from Wisconsin, on an appearance with Upfront with Mike Gausha, uh, explaining... Really, that being poor in this country is really a scam. You mentioned welfare reform being one of your priorities. That's something you talked about quite a bit during your campaign right. for Congress. What can you hope to do as a member of Congress to address that? Well, the first thing I do is you have to educate people. And already I started that process when I was up there the past week. Okay, so you're, you know, your viewers are aware. Uh, a single parent with a couple of kids can easily get $35,000 a year in total benefits between the health care and the earned income credit and the food share and the low income housing and what have you. When you look at such a large amount, and that's after taxes, 35, how many people make $35,000 a year after taxes? Most people don't. When you look at that amount of money, which is in essence a bribe, not to work that hard, or a bribe not to marry somebody with a full-time job, people immediately realize you have a problem. And then as soon as you realize you have a problem and something has to be done, then you look at the generosity of the benefits and see what you can do to pair them back. Bribe's a pretty strong word, don't you think? Well, if you tell somebody you're going to get $35,000 if you don't get married, and you're not going to get anything if you marry somebody making 50 grand a year, I don't know, it's kind of a, it's certainly a strong incentive not to raise children in wedlock. And you think you can make a dent on that issue, uh, oh, given the, the All right, dynamics? stop it here. Oh, wait, so, so the idea is that, yeah, I'm not going to, I, I don't want to be uh, married to someone who's making $50,000. If I could just have, if you're going to give me $35,000 on my own, I think I'm just going to have my kids out of wedlock, as if this is the way that people think. Now, the $35,000 figure apparently is uh, something from the Cato Institute, which is, in the real world, that uh, figure is it's simply not real. But it does include the earned income uh, tax credit, which, if we are now construing, and I, this is one thing that I, I actually appreciate, if we're construing the earned income tax credit as a cash gift, then we can now start to look at things like lowered capital gains rate as a gift. We can look at things like the mortgage deduction as a gift, as a bribe. In that respect, uh, it would be nice if people perceived and understood that any tax expenditure is in fact a benefit. But the idea that somehow uh, poor people or people who happen to be living in poverty at this moment, make that decision consciously because it's going to be more fun. It's, it's going to be a better living in public housing, getting food stamps. I'm living the life now. Having my kids on Medicaid, I'm living the life. This idea that somehow poverty is a scam, that people living in, uh, in poverty are scamming us.
Six out of seven children who get health insurance from the federal government have parents who work. Those people just don't realize what they could be getting away with. Six out of seven able-bodied food stamp recipients had a job within a year of their enrollment date. More than half work while on food stamps. <laughs> Don't they realize they could be making so much more if they just accepted the bribe? If they would just take this money that the government is giving them not to work. And when we talk about these type of bribes, frankly... I actually think there is a program that we could institute that actually might be a pretty good idea in this effect. We know that in Germany, for instance, they have work share programs. And there are, in fact, I think a half a dozen states in this country where unemployment benefits are paid out In situations, I think, where you either voluntarily or a, an employer signs up to do a work share situation where they have their workers work four days a week so they can hire more people. And unemployment insurance supplements this. That would actually be a great idea. It would be fantastic policy. But the idea that this, this congressman needs to educate his... I guess his constituents, to the real scam that this whole poor people thing is. Is, I mean, it's, it is just classic conservative values. We must tell our constituents that there is no wealth inequality, and to the extent that it is, it is by choice. It is by choice because we are actually providing too many benefits to people. Now, of course, the choice that people made back before there was Social Security, before there was aid to women independent children, when we go back to things like the Gilded Age, People were making the choice because it was also, it was just more fun to be broke. It was more fun to sleep on the streets back then. It is sort of stunning as just sort of the, the tremendous lack of history, of knowledge of history. I mean, just the basics that you must have to assume that, I mean, all of this poverty, the, the reason why we have poor people now is because... We are not letting them starve. And then it just becomes this sort of, you know, trip to Disney World every day. New study out by a couple of researchers. Uh, show... By Claudia Golden, Lawrence Katz, and Robert Margo, economists, uh, show that actually the, the data shows that when you have high levels of economic inequality, like during the Gilded Age, there is a gap between uh, wealthy people and middle class, working class, and people living in poverty as to their, the incidence of marriage. When inequality was low and stable during the prosperous post-World War II years, marriage rates were more similar, and the proportions of married people reached historic high for all groups. And you had these uh, similar marriage gaps as to what you're seeing today uh, prior to the 1930s during the Gilded Age. So, I mean, there's no, there's no basis for any of this, of course. I mean, I guess I, I don't know that I have to actually say that or it's even relevant <laughs> because I don't know that any of uh, 
Groffman's constituents really care. They just want to feel comfortable with the idea that to the extent that there's any people living in poverty, it's really just their choice. It's really just that's what they want to do.